Forecast. Hello, I'm Jacek Wawrecki and welcome to Forecast. Forecast is a place where we talk about sustainable future, the future of energy, smart cities, well, the things basically we are all interested in because the things that impact all of us. My guest today is Giles Dixon from Wind Europe. Hello. Hello, Jacek. Well, Wind Europe basically means that you want to develop wind power plants. Is this the time to develop wind power plants or already they are so developed that they have already destabilized the whole energy system and it doesn't make sense to build anymore? Okay, so Europe today gets 14% of its electricity from wind energy. Okay, 14%. 14 only. Yes, only. Maybe because the wind isn't blowing. No, that is mainly because we still have a relatively low amount of wind energy capacity in Europe. Okay, mm -hmm. now that may seem surprising because you look around and there are a lot of wind farms, okay? That's true. A lot of the wind farms we have in Europe today were built 10, 15 years ago with wind turbines that were much less powerful than the wind turbines that we're making today. Now, a wind farm normally lasts for around 20 years. And we're now getting to that stage where some of the first wind farms are coming to the end of their life. And so we're taking them down and we're replacing them with new wind turbines. And we can have fewer wind turbines than we had before, but produce much more electricity than we used to. So basically what you're doing, the pole stays there. No, everything, everything comes down, comes including down. the tower. Yeah. Okay. So and the foundation. What you're only preserving is the land. Exactly. Where it and the grid connection. And the grid connection. Yeah. Okay. So what are the benefits of wind power? Uh, because I I can easily enumerate the disadvantages, but I'm sure there are many more advantages than disadvantages. Okay. Firstly and most obviously, it is clean electricity. Mm -hmm. It is zero carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. Secondly. It is the cheapest form of new power generation that you can build. Mm -hmm. So if you need to build new power generation capacity, your cheapest option in Europe today is onshore wind. Your second cheapest option is offshore wind. They are cheaper than everything else. Coal, gas, nuclear, solar. And what comes third? Third is solar PV. Solar PV, and this is already uh, when you take into account the investment uh, expenses, yes? This is adding together the capital expenditure, mm -hmm. the investment and yeah. in the equipment. It's the operating costs over mm -hmm. the lifetime of the wind farm, and it's the costs of financing the investment. Okay, but the wind isn't always blowing. How can you have a working, a reliable energy system? with high percentage of wind power when it's calm. Yeah, okay. So wind is just 14% of the electricity that we consume okay. in Europe today. It is balanced out by lots of other things that are producing electricity in the system, of course, today. Now, we are developing electricity storage. There are many wind farms around Europe that are now being built with battery units inside them so that when you have more electricity than you need, you can store them in those battery units. There are wind farms also that are connected to hydropower storage, yeah, where you've got two reservoirs, one above the other. And when you've got a lot of wind in the system, you, you use that to up. pump the water up. And when there's no wind blowing, then you release the water and it powers the hydro turbine coming down. What about heat batteries? Do you also work on them, like you use electricity to heat up the water uh, and then you use the heat when it's needed? Yeah, we're working on that too. So there's a whole range of things that we are doing to manage the fact that wind power is variable. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. What about the local impact of wind 
turbines because there are a lot of issues with local communities. People mm -hmm. are complaining because they don't like the noise or they ju just don't like the look of them or, or just because they don't want to have them in their backyards. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm sure you have a pretty scientific approach to it mm -hmm. and you know how wind power plants really impact local communities. Yeah, we do. We're very scientific about this. You don't build a wind farm anywhere. Yeah, of course, there are rules about where you can put a wind farm. And in all countries, there are rules about how close to where people live you can put a wind farm. Yeah, you don't put it right next door to where mm -hmm. people are living. The normal distance from housing that you can put wind turbines is between 250 to 500 meters. Yes, okay. There are also noise regulations, yeah, that regulate the amount of noise that a wind turbine can make. The technology has developed, as you can imagine, so they're making less noise than they used to, but we're very conscious of all of these issues. Now, local communities, when you build a wind farm, of course, when you first tell them that you want to build a wind farm there, you have to engage the community, explain to them what this is all about, where the turbines are going to be, what the impact will be. You also explain what the economic benefits for the community exactly. are, are going they? to be. So every wind farm is paying taxes to the local municipal government. Okay? Mm -hmm. In Poland, there are town halls that are getting up to 25% of all of their revenue covered by the taxes that the local wind farm pays. And that money is being used to support the provision of local municipal civic services and to invest in local infrastructure, sports facilities, health and education, and so on. And this is making wind farms very popular in many parts of Poland and across Europe. And there are many local mayors in Poland, the town of Magornin, for example, where you have the largest wind farm in Poland. Wind is extremely popular there. The mayor is a big fan of wind energy and the local wind farm. If you imagine a city of the future, a city that's sustainable, will it be powered by wind? Increasingly, yes. So wind today is 14% of Europe's electricity. By 2030, we expect that to be somewhere between 25 and 30 percent. And what's the other okay. 70 then? The other 70 in 2030, you will still have a lot of gas, nuclear, solar, possibly some coal still on the system. By 2050, the EU expects wind to be over half of all of the electricity that we're consuming in Europe. But an important point to remember is this. Electricity is only one quarter of all of the energy that we consume in yeah. Europe, yeah? When you drive your car, in most cases, that's not electricity mm -hmm. still. Not yet. Not yet. That's going to change, of course. When you heat your house, usually it's from a gas boiler, OK? But again, that will change. We're going to be getting more electricity into the rest of the energy system we're going to be electrifying transport through electric vehicles and electrifying heating through heat pumps mm -hmm. and electric boilers, okay? Now, wind will therefore start to play more of a role in how people heat their houses and how they drive mm -hmm. their cars, okay? Let me give you an example. In the city of Hamburg, Germany, Germany they have a district heating system like you have district heating systems in Polish towns and cities, okay? District heating normally is powered by gas, maybe coal in Poland or perhaps biomass. In Hamburg, they've just converted one of their district heating systems to an electric boiler. And that electric boiler is going to be connected to a wind farm. So you will have wind farms directly powering how people heat their homes mm -hmm. via an electric boiler running the district heating system. And we're going to see much more of this. So we can see that the city of the future has its root already now. The future is beginning at the very moment and we are witnessing it. My guest was Giles Dixon, Wind Europe. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for your presence. Thank you for having me. Forecast.